Ooh. Hello, everybody. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hello, Elizabeth. Patricia Hurt. Hello, everybody. Good day, everybody. We hope Monday treated you well. We know the Lord did. We're all here. Hello. Hello, Leona. Gina, Sherry. Hello, everybody. Hello, Sandy Gregg. Hello, Joy Beth. Burr. Boy, I miss Florida on days like this. <laughs> <clears throat> hello, Brenda Tucker, Angel. Hello, everybody. We're about to get started. Gina says it's chilly. <clears throat> it is chilly. <clears throat> you got a hairball stuck in my throat. Probably from cuddling with dogs. All right, as we're waiting on people to get in the room today at noontime, we will have class two of our course uh, thyroid triumph, I believe is what we called it. I never can remember the names I give stuff. Thyroid triumph, we've got class two, we've got a, some great recipes to give those that are trying to tame their thyroid. Thyroid regulates, controls your metabolism, amongst other things. Uh, we'll be um, doing a quick summary and then we'll get right into the meal ideas at 12 o'clock. First class is always free at Faithfully Fit. That's an advanced course, a sister company to Shibboleth. Here it was just a, it's an open open class. We call this daily the daily deliverance. That's what we're going to call it next year, and just an eclectic mix of all kinds of topics that can help us on our weight loss and wellness journey. Today is National Oatmeal Muffin Day. And it's also National Hard Candy Day. So I thought, ah, oh, that'll be fun. We can approve some oatmeal muffins and some hard candy. And then the Lord's laid something on our heart that I hope will help those that are sincere about transforming their physical bodies uh, on a, on a la in a lasting way. As we look at the statistics, uh, the evidence, we feel that we fare better than most. I think the last... It's been a while, but the last national survey I looked at amongst uh, companies that are in the weight loss and wellness business, 93% or something like that of their people gain all their weight back or gain all their weight back or uh, even more. Uh, and I think we're in the 70 percentile. So Shibboleth is doing better than most companies. And I think that's because we tackle the spiritual, the spiritual aspects, beginning a thing right, it'll end right. We talk a lot about behavior modification instead of just selling a vacuum sealed meal or a shot or a potion. We talk about real and lasting change and uh, we're going to keep going that way. It's not what people want. That's not what, hey, hey, Brother Gary, it's not what people want. People want a quick fix, but that's not what works. What works is starting with that chief cornerstone of faith. And then building upon that uh, with your nutrition program, you know, what, what are your boundaries that you're going to live with and live by on a daily basis? And then we can add exercise and supplementation and have a well-rounded lifestyle. Uh, there's nothing more important outside of your relationship with Jesus Christ than your relationship with yourself and with your body that we talked to today. Hello? 
we we talked yesterday about how uh, this this temple is on lease. We're just the tenant. We have dominion. I thought that was pretty good. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we have dominion while we're here, but the landlord is going to come and want to do an inspection you know, from time to time. So it's better if we do a thorough examination first. Are we taking care of the temple? So lots to unpack. You can't, it's just not, um, it's not one thing. If you're looking for real and lasting change, it's going to have to be comprehensive. And we try to do that here. Before we get into the muffin recipe and the hard candy idea, and then the message for today, are there any nutrition questions? That's what I'm here first and foremost for this daily deliverance is to answer your questions, to help personalize your approach and journey uh, because there's no way with us keeping things so affordable that we would have the staffing to return. I think yesterday I got 70 something emails and mo I'd say half of them wanting a meal plan that's personalized to them, can't do it. So we, we come here so that we can answer it and it benefit everybody. All right, so please. Please ask any question that you have, and then we'll uh, get over into the information for today. You can unmute or leave it in the thread. Uh, the question that I had uh, comes from the videos that you've been doing for the, the uh, recipes. Um, the the hot and sour soups and the egg drop soup, and I didn't think about that until this morning. Are that is that considered uh, the clean eating? Is that a... Um, uh, is that a blessed day or what kind of day is that whenever you have something like that? If, if I was doing with Shibboleth, it's just a perfect day. Right. Um, if, if I was trying to eat clean, then I probably, they're going to be using MSG and stuff like that. So I probably, I, I probably wouldn't. Yeah. If I were going to call it some faithfully fit type of day, it would definitely be a grace day. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Definitely a grace day there. Because we know that they're not using the cleanest ingredients at a Chinese restaurant. So that's probably how I would, what I would refer to that as if we're trying to honor the Lord in naming our type day. What is the name of the vitamin pack you take daily that will help blood sugar balance? I take Peak Performance. Mine's actually in the kitchen. Took it this morning. Um, peak Performance. I take Total Health now. I started off with Peak Performance Brain Health. I recommend metabolic help to people trying to lose weight. Ladies that um, I, today I'm going to make a new recommendation in the thyroid class. If you have hypothyroidism, I'm going to recommend bone and joint. After learning more about thyroid and doing a deep dive, um, I'm going to be recommended bone and joint. But uh, the peak performance that we can rest assured that we're getting everything that we need, regardless of our family history, uh, is going to be total health. That If you can swing that in the budget, total health is comprehensive. There's nothing lacking in that product. So that's the one I would go with. If we're already a Faithfully Fit member, do we pay for the 40-day revival? You don't have to pay, Sherry. We will take tips. Uh, we are um, an underfunded little ministry. We will take tips if somebody feels led, led to give tips. But if you're a Faithfully Fit member, there's no additional charge for the 40-day. That comes with your membership. Any other questions today? The 40-day is going to be comprehensive. We're calling it the Wellness Revival. And we'll be starting on the 1st. That's what the Lord's told me to do. I'll make a way for those that the Lord didn't tell to do that, to do it the next week. But uh, we're going to start on the first this year. We usually wait a couple of weeks because people are still eating leftovers. They've lost momentum. Takes some time to see them come back. But I know what the Lord told me, and the Lord told me to do it on the first. And that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to, it's basically going to be a nutrition wellness revival every day basically a wellness revival for because if you can stick with that and commit 40 days under the lord um there there's just no stopping you in 2024 i've done seen it in the faith 
There's no stopping any of us. There's no stopping Shibboleth. There's no stopping Faithfully Fit. There's no stopping y'all. If we'll commit those 40 days unto the Lord and start every day with that devotion that we're going to do together, it's going to be a blast. God's going to really bless us. Going to bless us mightily. Anybody else? How much weight can you lose? <laughs> oh, God, y'all. So uh, we can lose about, uh, you know, in 40 days, somebody like Sandy will probably, she'll kill this. I've seen her do it before. But let's say average of 20 pounds, which is a lot. You can't lose 100 pounds in 40 days. Uh, but what we're talking about is getting our momentum, getting our spirits right. It's, I really believe if we approach this where weight loss is secondary and the first is spiritual fitness, I believe indirectly you'll achieve more weight loss. I really believe that. Where we make God and our relationship with God our emphasis and let God be our portion for 40 days. This is a people of God revival. It's not going to be for the squeamish. The Holy Spirit, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to get on our toes, to come with a sharp two-edged sword and to cut us up. Uh, total does have everything in it, but if you have hypothyroidism, you might want to take some extra calcium some extra glucosamine things like that but that's up to you total health has everything in it that you need but some people want the specific product that's tailored to their individual issue so if you have osteoporosis running in the family or hypothyroidism and you're trying to save a little money you might want to go with bone and joint no no and i would stay with total health total health is a superior product yep I just saw your comment. All right, let's have a little fun. We'll break in. We can, we'll still have time for some questions. So first of all, I don't have this one written up. Then we'll go look at the National Oatmeal Muffin. And then we can make some swaps if you want to make swaps in the oatmeal muffin. I did try out a version of this recipe. It's pretty good. I'm not a big oatmeal fan, but these were delicious. Um, and then hard candy. So hard candy, what are we talking about here? Okay, so there's a lot of hard candy that you can find that you can have on the program. So if you're consuming under 50 calories of hard candy that's sugar-free, it's going to have sugar alcohol. You might want to write that down. If you have more than 50 calories, you might get uh, a little, little problem in your shorts, Okay. So hard candy is full of sugar alcohol if it's sugar-free. You can have up to 50 calories of those. Um, I think there's like sugar-free Werther's and things like that. You can have those, but just remember they're heavy in sugar alcohol. Sugar alcohol is antibacterial, antiviral. It has some benefits, but when you overconsume sugar alcohol, you can have gastrointestinal distress. And in addition to that, it can still cause because of uh, memory, that pancreas memory, uh, you can have a little bit of a blood sugar rise. So up to 50 calories of sugar-free hard candy is an extra on the program. So if you're needing something between eating episodes to help calm down you that hand mouth disease that we all have, then you can do that. Not Don't ever do hard candy that has sugar. That That's hard candies pre-digested. It doesn't take any effort for the body to digest it. You're literally shooting up with sugar. And even with 50 calories of Lifesavers and Jolly Ranchers, Starburst, you, you will spike your blood sugar. And just that can cause you to go out of efficient fat burning mode. Don't ever do that. But you can do sugar free. Another thing, a natural, faithfully fit members, a natural hard candy that I do all the time, grapes. We talked about this the other day. I like to freeze grapes, seedless grapes. Um, seed or seedless, doesn't matter. But seedless grapes are my Jolly Rancher. I freeze them, put those in my mouth, and I've got a great hard candy. 
Now, what I will do with it, though, I'll pull them out of the freezer. I'll wet them a little bit so that my spark sticks to it, and I'll sprinkle spark on them. That gives it a more tart, like Jolly Rancher flavor. If you do a palm full of grapes like that, it's an extra because that's only that's under 50 calories. Another thing that I love to do is take Egg Whites International, mix it with spark, and then put those in an ice tray, put them in the freezer. And now I've got something that's really good for me, an amino acid uh, bomb that help gut be gone, butt be gone, helps with energy, helps with muscle preservation. So I'm getting protein. And of course you can, you don't have to use the egg whites, but I do. And then you can just suck that juice right out of that hard egg white that you've got in your mouth. That's pretty good, okay? So there's you a couple of hard candy ideas. Any questions about those? National Hard Candy Day. It really is. Today's National Hard Candy Day. Any questions about getting your fix on with your hard candy? Can you do that with vodka? No. No, that's not allowed. That's between you and the Lord. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, so I'm going to show you this little recipe and we can talk through. You may want to ask for some swaps because you don't like my ingredients and I can help you with those swaps now. If you go to my profile, you will see this recipe, Travis Martin, Happy National Oatmeal Muffin Day. The only thing I don't like about it is I'm a man and I'm lazy uh, when it comes to cooking and cleaning up. So it had too many ingredients for me. Uh, by the way, when we if we ever get the cookbook out there, the meal idea book, it's not really a cookbook, it's a meal idea book. It ain't gonna have a lot of ingredients. It's just too much for me. But this we I did this. I'm trying to be disciplined and make myself try stuff. So it's one cup of rolled oats, like Quaker's fine. One cup of whole wheat flour. I use Bob's Red Mill whole grain flour here. A half a cup of ProFlex vanilla flavored protein powder. Um, you could also use Beverly here. It works well. A quarter cup of FiberWise all-purpose flour. You could use instead of the FiberWise, we've got to get the flour in it, the fiber in it, excuse me. Instead of using that, you could use Fiber Gourmet. Monk fruit, baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, salt, Greek plain yogurt, fat-free fair life milk, two eggs, a quarter cup of MCT oil vanilla extract, half cup of berries, half cup of chopped nuts, one, one muffin in a regular size muffin tin that fits under the palm could be a, a snack. Two muffins could be a meal, or you could take one muffin and have an egg white omelet with it, add a lean protein to it. Pretty easy otherwise to make up. It's just a lot of ingredients. Thought we would uh, start looking at these national holidays and having some fun with those and use it, use it as a way to teach. But if there's some ingredients there that you want to swap out, we can take a look at that. But uh, it turned out pretty good, and I'm not a big muffin person. Any questions or comments about these? I didn't make them as pretty as the ones in the picture. Would anybody try a recipe like that with that many ingredients? When I was doing it, I'm thinking, would people really... But yeah, okay, Joy Beth Wood, good. So some people really are artisans in the kitchen and enjoy that. Take a picture. Mine were real crumbly, but they were delicious. They just kind of crumbled up. I probably did something wrong, but they were delicious. They had a great flavor. The fiber wise flour or the fiber gourmet flour is critical here. If you don't get the fiber in there, you're going to shoot your blood sugar up too much. The protein's pretty adequate because of the plain yogurt and the fat-free fair life milk, but we had to get the fiber up. Any questions about any of that? 
Can I use a keto flour instead of fiber gourmet uh, and add fiber mine? Uh, check your keto flour out. Is it fiber or is it fat? Because if it's just fat, then you, that won't work. Uh, keto flour is usually an, a nut-based flour, an almond flour. That's not going to help us in that particular recipe. It would actually make it worse. Almond milk would work. Unsweetened almond milk, not sweetened almond milk. Got to watch those carbs. It's already carby, so you don't want to add sweetened almond milk if you're not going to go with my milk and you're going to go with almond, go with unsweetened almond milk. Did that make sense how I answered those two questions for y'all? Keto flour is typically high fat, not high fiber. Now, I'm not saying if we look at it separately, Angel, that we couldn't make it work. We would have to look at it separately. I have a thing that I plug all this into to make sure the protein and net carbs are in order and the fibers in order. So I could take your individual recipe and look at it for you. I'm not saying that you could not use, I use keto type flours, almond flour all the time, but not for this particular recipe. It's kind of carby. So what we're staying away from is carby and fatty. If it's carby and fatty at the same time, that's a problem. If it's going to be fatty, it can't be carby. We already added quite a bit of fat with the eggs. Got to be careful with it. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Okay, I'm going to give you the message then. Y'all not ask, asking any questions. I'm going to give you something to think about. And if, if you're offended by the word of God, by the sharp word of God, now would be a time for us to say goodbye and we love you and we'll see you in the next lesson. Anybody offended by the word? You know, I know you want to, can't feel comfortable to say I'm offended by the word because you love God. You just don't want to hear the word right now. You're in a different place, different space, and we acknowledge that. And we just want to say thank you for coming to class today. We love you and we appreciate you very much. I've been in that space too. Where I, I don't need it right now. I'll get it on Sunday. Bye. I get it. Shirley says, I make my own oat flour out of steel cut oats. That's better, Shirley. Um, I prefer that. The texture of these muffins may not turn out right uh, because of the steel cut oats, but they're healthier for you than Quaker. Much better for you. I wanted to use those. All right, so I'm going to get to it. Hold, hold tight one minute. Okay, let me make sure I find my... Okay, so I want to talk to you a minute about something that we're all familiar with, okay? Um, let me ask some questions first. The Bible says when we abide in Christ, we will have confidence in Christ. I believe that to mean confidence in our daily walk, confidence that everything's going to work out, uh, confidence that God is going to see about us. Uh, if we abide in Christ, we know that we can avoid the wrath of God. When I say the wrath, now I'm going to tie this into weight loss. I've been doing word studies. Y'all will be able to tell I've been doing word studies. So the word wrath, to you, when I say, because to me, until yesterday, it was different. The Bible constantly tells us if we don't abide in him, if we don't love his commandments, if we don't follow his commandments, we will experience the wrath of God. To you, what does that mean? And you can unmute or type it. We're, do y'all want to avoid the wrath of God? I want to avoid the wrath of God. I have I found out yesterday after doing a word study that I have experienced the wrath of God during various times of my life. Light, it was light. It wasn't a heavy whipping, but it was a pretty good whipping. 
So I love that Angel says discipline. Sander says his abandonment. Y'all already knew more than I did yesterday. The wrath of God. So the Bible tells us to avoid the wrath of God and that those that live in iniquity and sin will experience the wrath of God. And after doing a word study, I kind of line up with Angel and Sandra. The best way I know to describe it is he turns you over to yourself. He just gives you over to yourself. You don't have his help anymore. You don't have his aid anymore. And when we experience the wrath of God, it's because we are not living and acknowledging and loving his commandments. And now for years, because I was out of the will of God, I said, we just love one another. We love God. We love our neighbor. We love ourselves. And, and that's it. It's all about love and his grace is sufficient. And I've got a different take on that. We've talked a lot about it, but I want to throw something at you that's very familiar. And then I'm going to get over to why we might not have the personal power that we need to transform. So let me read this to you. See if this sounds familiar. See if this sounds familiar. The Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. What does that mean? I want you to think about it. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. Okay, so these are his 10 commandments that Moses gave us. And where were those commandments placed? Back in, in the Old Testament days, where were they placed? They revered the Ten Commandments. And anytime the children of Israel revered the Ten Commandments and lived by the Ten Commandments and feared God, eschewed evil, they were blessed. They were protected against their enemies. Where was, where was those commandments kept in those days? Does anybody know? I know you do. They were kept on tablets. Where were those tablets kept? I think I see Joy Best saying it. The Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. See, the children of Israel had a covenant with God. If they would keep the commandments, they would inherit the land, right? They would inherit the blessing. They would inherit the favor. Now, stay with me. God is my helper. I want you to think about where those commandments are kept now. They were kept in the Ark of the Covenant. Spiritually speaking, where do we keep them? Woo! We keep them in here, don't we? They were in the Ark of the Covenant and in the temple. The whole, in the most holy of holies, Margot says. Amen. Now they're written on the flesh, fleshly tablet, written on the heart. But in that day, stay with me, they were in the mo kept in the most holies of holies. They were in the Ark of the Covenant. They were written on those tablets, and that was the power and glory of God. That was his word. They believed in keeping those commandments, and they would be protected. But they wanted a king, and that king's name was Saul. Did Saul end up being a good king? No, he was a double-minded man. One minute he's hugging king, he's hugging David, who would be king. One minute he's hugging him, and the next minute he's throwing javelins at him. He was jealous of him. So here he was wanting to do things his way, wanting the glory, wanting them to sing songs about him, and he would get mad and he would get jealous and he would covet. He so had turned his back on God that he didn't care about the Ark of the Covenant and he let the Philistines steal it and take it from the children of Israel. Yes or no? 
Now, I've got a question for you. Jesus is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. As a king today, are you a good king or are you a bad king? What do I mean by that? Are you still keeping that? Are you still loving his commandments? Are you still daily trying to willfully abide by them? Are you doing the things that God has commanded you to do so that you might have favor with the Lord and not experience the wrath of God, which means you're left to your own devices? People tell me all the time, I just can't seem to do this. Why not? Have you been left to your own devices? Or are you having to do this all alone because you're not abiding in him anymore? So what happened, Saul didn't even care enough to go back in to, to, back in to get back the Ark of the Covenant with the commandments. He let the Philistines just take it. He didn't care anymore. But he died, didn't he? He died. And one of the first things David did, he went back to get that Ark of the Covenant. He went back to get those commandments that was in that ark to bring it back in, to bring it back to his people. If you remember, he even danced before the entire house of Israel as they brought the ark of the covenant back, celebrated, made a fool of himself according to his wife and according to the world. But he was celebrating that, hey, we've got the ark of the covenant. The glory of God is back here. We're going to abide by his word. And because of that, they were protected from their enemies. They found favor with God and they weren't fighting their battles alone again. They had a good king. Now, do you want to be a man after a man or woman after God's own heart? Or do you want to be like Saul, double-minded? Saul was a double-minded man. One minute he was for God, the next he could care less about God. Or we can be like David and have a single eye. Yes, David sinned and fell short of the glory of God. We all do. But he was a man after God's own heart because he loved the Lord. And his eye was single, he was always fixated on that that God wanted him to do. And when he fell short, he repented and he got back in alignment with God's will. That's what we have to do here today as it relates to our temple. Some of us, inside of our hearts have given in over to the world's ideas and the world's philosophies and everything's okay. Everything's not okay. We're supposed to do the best that we can do to keep God's commandments. And yes, if we love God and love our neighbor as we love ourselves, all of those commandments are going to be kept by default because they all set us up for success. But the minute we start honoring God and honoring God's word again, I believe the Holy Spirit will help us on our weight loss and wellness journey. You can feel him walk with you. You can feel him talk with you because you're trying to abide in him daily. You will have discipline that you did not have before. He said, take my yoke upon you. Food addiction is a yoke. And here's the thing about a yoke, and then I'll close my remarks. When we're yoked up with food addiction, when we're yoked up with alcohol, when we're yoked up with drugs, when we're yoked up to something that's not good, we will take on the form of that that we're yoked up with. We will go in the direction that it leads us. If you are gaining weight, and it's out of control, it's because you have a yoke around your neck and it's called food addiction. The only way to break that yoke is to abide in God. He will break that yoke and he will put another yoke upon your neck that is Christ Jesus. Then we will take on more of the form of Christ. Is Christ overweight? He was not overweight. He was disciplined in all things. That may be a silly analogy, but I want you to think. He was full of love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and goodness and meekness and faith and discipline. So if we want to be more disciplined, we have to take on the shape of discipline, which is to have his yoke around our neck. 
Can we have two yokes around our neck at the same time? If we're food addicted and we have that yoke of bondage around our neck, can we have the yoke of Christ around our neck? He said his yoke was easy and his burdens are light. Is the yoke of food addiction easy and burdens light? People say weight loss is hard. Well, I'm going to tell you, not losing weight's a lot harder. Ask anybody that's sitting there 100 pounds overweight. It's I a lot harder. That. Could you try again? Siri. Huh? <laughs> She's talking in every device right now. So plus one seven seven zero eight seven six. Do not call anybody. <laughs> She's trying to call somebody. All right. So take his yoke upon you today. We can start by acknowledging his commandments again and doing our best not to willfully sin. Sin just means falling short of the standard, falling short of the mark. And thank God for grace when we fall short of the mark. There's Christ. We're covered in the blood. He fills in the gap for us. But we're not supposed to be engaged in willful gluttony daily, willful sin of any type on a daily basis. If we want the power of God back in our lives, we're going to have to obey his word. We're going to have to fear God and keep his commandments. Sandra says, I'm falling short. We all are, aren't we, Sister Sandra? Thank God that he makes up, he, he meets us in the gap. He fills up our shortcomings. But grace is not a license for me to get up and not try. It's not a license for me to eat what I want, when I want, as much as I want, as often as I want. The landlord's coming, and he's going to want you to give an account for how you've taken care of this temple. We do this one day at a time. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. We want a forward view, and, and we want a, a daily view. So we've got the forward view. Now we put that up. We know it's going to take 100 days to lose 50 pounds. We put that up. Now one day at a time, and we find joy in his commandments. We find joy in eating breakfast for the Father, lunch for the Son, dinner for the Holy Spirit. One day at a time, you will feel when you lay your head down at night. I believe with all of my heart, you will feel, you will hear in your spirit, this is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. You fought a good fight today. Give it a try. Life is a lot more fun that way. It's a lot more adventurous that way. Okay. And, and give a shout today. At some point and sometime today, give a shout of praise. Give a shout of victory. Call forth and forward the things that are not as though they are. He inhabits your praise. When nobody's looking, if you're embarrassed, just let us shout out. Let us shout out. You go to a ball game or a hoot nanny or whatever, and boy, people are shouting and making out, and you kind of expect that. But the people of God, for some reason, have gotten where they believe they're just supposed to walk around like a mouse. The only mouse in your life should be Satan. That's all he is. He's a mouse with a microphone. That's all that devil is. He ain't got no power, whatever power he's got you've given him. He's a little mouse with a microphone in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Get behind me, you mouse. I'm not a mouse. You the mouse, devil. You a mouse with a microphone. You like to magnify all of my mistakes, you mouse with a microphone. Get behind me, you devil. He's got no power over you, no power over your children, no power over anything unless you give that devil that power. He's not no big old monster that you need to be afraid of. He's a mouse with a microphone, been trying to convince you to be a mouse for the last decade. Stop being. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. You're victorious. You're more than a conqueror. Yes, shout at the strawberries at the grocery store. I'm glad you still remember that story, Sandy. Any questions or comments for me before we go today? That's good stuff, Travis. Good stuff. Yes, amen. 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 Thank you, sis. Good to be with y'all today. Hope you picked up a little something. 
take him one day at a time. Thankful for the day. Thankful for Jesus. Thankful for you all. Mouse with a microphone. Pretty good stuff. He'll magnify all of your mistakes, Sandy. He'll say, you tried so many times. What makes you think? You say, shut up, you mouse with a microphone. And then you shout. The devil's not going to flee unless you shout. Um, not all are going on the 40 days, just those that decide to, Miss Sandra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't make anybody do it, but. Any, any questions or comments before we go? Any prayer requests? Sandra, we'll be announcing. The girls, uh, we got a small team. Uh, we appreciate any help we can get through Venmo or Cash App. Um, but we're, we're trying to get all that ready for y'all. Any questions or comments before we go today? Don't forget at 12 o'clock, we have the Faithfully Fit Members Only, lesson two of our uh, Thyroid Triumph class. Some great meal ideas today, recipes on overcoming the thyroid issues that you might have. Thyroid regulates metabolism. If you're not a Faithfully Fit member, uh, your first class is free, so come join us. We'd love to have you. You'll be our special guest. We're really enjoying those deep dives into nutrition. All right, y'all. I'm going to say a quick prayer, and we'll let you go. Thanks for coming today, and Merry Christmas. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, God, with thankful hearts, Lord. Thankful for this day of life. Thankful for the breath of life. Thankful for our vision, our hearing, our moving around. Lord, all those things that we normally take for granted because they just are. There's many people that can't see, can't hear. But God, more than my natural sight and my natural hearing, I'm most thankful today woo, that you give me back my spiritual eyes, that you give me back my spiritual hearing. I know there's many people that seeing they don't see, hearing they don't hear. I'm glad that there's a spiritual realm that's more real than this dream that we're dreaming here. Uh, Father, there's things that I can see in my spirit now that no one else can see that would think I'm silly, but I see it and I know it's real and I know you're going to perform it. Uh, Lord, you are always truthful. You never lie. The Bible says that all men are liars, but God, you are the truth. You're not, you don't just tell the truth. You are the truth and your word is true and we can count on your word. And I'm glad today that you have told every one of us that you will be there with us, that you'll never leave us, never forsake us in this journey. Father, none of us here want to experience your wrath where we're turned over to our own devices and we have to do things on our own. Some of us have been doing that too long. Lord, I pray today if there's somebody in need that they might be overshadowed with the Holy Ghost and they might turn back to you, God, and that you would heal their land, heal their bodies, give them that abundant life that you've promised us, God. God, remember all those it's my duty to pray for, those that are sick, those that are afflicted, but more importantly, those that are caught up in sin and iniquity. Father, I pray for them today, God. Go with us, be with us the rest of this day. If any good things accomplished, we'll bow our unworthy head, give you the praise for it all, because it's in your precious son, Jesus' name, that we pray and beg, amen. Thank y'all, we'll see you soon.